Guys, Happy New Year. Welcome to 2020 and a whole new decade and a whole new Cats Moses Woodworking. Not really. We're going to still keep kicking butt and uh, taking names. We did just start a charity, though, for disabled woodworkers. That was my last video. Go check it out. But today we're going to make this super simple and adjustable box joint. It took about half an hour to make. We've got a project coming up. Where we're going to be making really big box joints and the Incra iBox can only do just under an inch. So pfft, time to make a new one. Uh, this one's adjustable using these uh, paper shims or any type of shims you want. You could change it out for different sizes. So this fence is disposable and removable. So you could do different sizes of box joints. Uh, it's a real simple, easy jig that everybody should have in their shop. So let's get into it. Okay, so as we get into making this, first step is gonna be to make your runner and your base, and then the base is gonna have a fence on it. That'll be our first fence. That'll be our non-sacrificial fence. That'll be the one that's glued in and stays there. I'm gonna use half inch MDF for my base because like I said in the intro, I'm trying to make something that gets the most height out of my box joints. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and cut this up and put it together. The things that are important are your base needs to be square to the blade and the miter slot and then your fence also needs to be square to the blade. Uh, and if you get that stuff right, it really is going to make your job way easier down the line. So uh, let's get into it here. We're gonna start by cutting a three quarter inch strip for our miter slot and gluing that onto our base. Okay, so I've put a half inch dado stack in my table saw. I've cut a half inch key. Now this is really long because I'm gonna chop it up into a couple pieces because this is gonna be our spacer. So what we're gonna do, so you saw in the intro where I had the adjustment block right here. So we need to make sure this is our sacrificial fence. This is not gonna get glued down. This is only gonna get screwed to this. We need to leave enough room to have a stop here and we're gonna have those pieces of paper in between there to be able to adjust it. This is our half inch key. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a cut through this that is gonna be at least half an inch tall. And with box joint jigs, it's really easy to get the height of stuff because you can just lay it on there and kind of test it. And you could be a little bit over it. This does not matter. We're gonna go ahead, clamp this to here, make that cut, and then we're gonna space it. We're gonna cut this up into three pieces. And what we're gonna do is insert this into the hole we just cut and use another one to space it over. I'll show you here in a minute. And then once everything's spaced, that's when we're gonna put in our block here and we're gonna put in a few pieces of paper. Uh, we're gonna screw this in and that's gonna allow us the adjustability. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started on cutting this. All right, we have our fence ready to go. In a perfect world, we used these, which we know are 0.5, and so this should be perfect. However, box joint jigs always need a little adjustment, and I found a great way to do this. So what I do, paper is about 0.004 thick, which is the perfect amount of adjusting for a box joint jig. So what I'll do is I'll just take a bunch of sheets of paper. This is, I don't know, about eight thick. And then I'll take a block of hardwood here. And you don't want to glue this in because if you ever need to trade out your fence or move it over. So then I just take it and put it against those pieces of paper. And I'll just leave those pieces of paper in there. And we'll just screw this block of wood in here. So now that we have this block of wood in here, what does that mean for us? We can unscrew the, the back fence here, take out a sheet of paper, and then move it over with new screw holes. And that's gonna allow us to adjust 0.04 at a time. Or if you need to more, do more, you can remove more sheets of paper, but it's relatively simple. So additionally, what's important here is this gap. And whether you use paper to measure that or a feeler gauge, it doesn't matter. You wanna create a gap here 
uh, that is measurable. So with feeler gauge, you find what size that gap is and take away or add gauges depending on which way you need to move it and which way you need to adjust it. So the, now we've got it put together, let's give it a test and see if we need to do any adjustment. So first step when cutting box joints, and I have a great video called Center Keyed Box Joints uh, in the Joint of the Week playlist. I'll link it in this top left-hand corner here uh, that goes into this in more detail. But when you're cutting box joints, you want to set the blade to just like a hair over the height of your board. And then what you're going to do is you're going to make a cut up against your key and then slide it over your key, make another cut and keep going till your board's done. And then you're going to take your other one. You're going to put your old board over the key, butt this up against it. Uh, and then you're going to cut this one in that location and so on and so forth. So let me show you how we do this and see if we get a good fitting box joint. Okay, that fit just dead nuts there. So uh, what would you do if you needed to adjust? If you're too tight, you would want to move this way towards your blade. You would move the key towards your blade by, you know, a couple paper width. So you would add paper to this gap. Um, if you were too loose, you could widen this. So move the key away from by removing pieces of paper and sliding over the block. And you would need to re-drill and redo your screw holes each time because if you use the same screws, it's just gonna move it back into the place it was before. So guys, that's a super easy, accurate way to make a box joint and it's adjustable, which is the key feature of a box joint jig. That took about 30 minutes with shooting uh, and it was just really easy to do. Uh, if you wanna support the channel, head over to the cat Moses store and get one of our great products or now you can join and become a member to the YouTube channel that's right next to the subscribe button. Guys, thanks for watching. Stay safe in the shop and have a wonderful day.